and I call on Marie Todd. Thank, thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm delighted to update Parliament this afternoon on the agreement that this government has reached with COSLA leaders to fully fund the expansion of early learning and childcare entitlement to 11.40 hours from August 2020. This landmark agreement is the culmination of more than two years of hard work by the Scottish Government and local authorities to establish a robust shared understanding of the costs attached to the expansion. It's evidence of real partnership working to deliver a shared ambition and to give all of our children the best start in life. Responding to the agreement on behalf of COSLA, Councillor Gail McGregor, who joined me for a fantastic visit to Cameron House Nursery in Edinburgh this morning, said that local government is fully committed to the early learning and childcare expansion to 11.40 hours. COSLA and Scotland's council leaders are fully behind the policy. This agreement by council leaders in agreeing the multi-year funding deal is a culmination of months of hard work, negotiation and real partnership working behind the scenes. We needed to get this policy right from the start, together with the level of funding, and I think we've achieved this by working together. Under this agreement, the Scottish Government's committed to provide local authorities with revenue funding of an additional 567 million per year by 2021-22, the first full financial year of the expansion. This will bring annual public spend on early learning and childcare to 990 million. In addition, the Scottish Government's committed to provide local authorities with total capital funding of 476 million over four years to support buildings projects to create new indoor and outdoor capacity to deliver the expansion. These funding allocations will of course be subject to parliamentary approval of the Scottish budget for the respective years, but I hope that members across the chamber can support this truly transformative investment in Scotland's children. The agreed fun funding package is the product of extensive work by the Scottish Government and the local authorities to prepare robust cost estimates for the expansion. Local authorities submitted their initial expansion plans to the Scottish Government in September 2017. Following a period of engagement, dialogue, challenge and refinement, building on the learning from an initial review of expansion plans, local authorities submitted refreshed financial estimates in March 2018. And it's these March 2018 estimates that form the basis of the package agreed on Friday. I'm grateful to all of those people in local authorities who work tirelessly behind the scenes to prepare estimates and to refine plans. Scottish ministers and COSLA leaders considered the robustness of these estimates and through negotiation we reached agreement on adjustments to be made to revenue and capital initial estimates in order to arrive at reasonable and evidence-based funding national totals. I am confident that the joint review process and the compromises made by both parties will deliver value for money. The agreed revenue funding package is the product of an intense period of local authorities refining demand and supply estimates and associated service delivery models which have combined to reduce local authority estimates of the workforce requirements of the expansion. This funding package ensures that a sustainable hourly rate will be paid to funding providers across Scotland, delivering the funded entitlement to early learning and childcare. And this landmark deal not only secures sustainable funding for local authorities, but also for early learning childcare providers across the private and third sectors, including childminders. This is a critical component of our new funding follows the child model. In particular, this bears out our commitment to provide sufficient funding to ensure that all child care workers delivering the funded entitlement will be paid at least the Scottish living wage from 2020. We recognise the valuable role that our early years practitioners play in shaping our children's developments, and I'm proud that the funding package recognises this. One of the most significant ways in which the expansion will contribute to closing the poverty-related attainment gap 
is through increasing the uptake of entitlement for eligible two-year-olds. We know that there's scope to improve upon existing levels of uptake so that more children and families can benefit from this offer. The levels of revenue funding agreed with COSLA are sufficient to deliver a near doubling of uptake amongst eligible two-year-olds to 64%. I very warmly welcome local authorities' commitment to put resources in place to work with families to raise awareness of the entitlement and to help families to access these services. We recognise that the funding package agreed last week represents our collective best estimate of the costs arising from the expansion at this point of time. It's therefore incumbent upon all of us to continue to keep these estimates under review to ensure that we maximise the value for Scotland's children and families from this investment. The Scottish Government and COSLA have agreed to put in place proportionate annual review arrangements to provide assurance to all parties that the funding package reflects the costs of delivery and the actual uptake of the offer. This annual review will provide us with an evidence base to consider whether this fund policy is fully funded and to take action if it appears to be over or under funded. The expansion planning process that we undertook with local authorities was underpinned by a primary planning principle that authorities should make best use of existing resources, then consider purchasing capacity from the private and third sectors and then finally, if there was no alternative, build new capacity. Local authorities have applied this principle in de deriving their capital requirements for the expansion. In order to promote equity and fairness, the funding providing, provided to local authorities, we agreed with COSLA leaders to apply standard reference rates to local authority capital cost estimates. These reference rates reflect um, acknowledge the impact of rurality. Once these reference rates have been applied, the multi-year capital funding requirement for the expansion is 476 million, which will be distributed over four financial years from 2017 to 18 to 2020-21. This investment will deliver around 900 capital investment projects across Scotland, including more than 100 new nursery facilities. I was personally delighted to see that authorities are planning to make significant use of outdoor facilities as part of their expansion plans, enriching the early learning and childcare experience for our children. As I outlined to Parliament in March, such ambitious plans always come with challenges. I've never denied that these challenges exist and I'm absolutely committed to addressing them in partnership with local authorities and other delivery partners. One of those challenges was reaching agreement on a funding package. And I am delighted that we have indeed risen to and resolved that challenge. And that has been made possible by genuine partnership working with our colleagues in local government. Agreement of this funding package is a critical milestone in the delivery of the expansion of early learning and childcare entitlement by 2020. It marks the commencement of a delivery phase and local authorities will now be able to progress their local expansion plans without delay. I'm in no doubt that expanding the provision of funded early learning and childcare is the right policy to give all of our children the best start in life. We must never forget that the fundamental purpose of the expansion is to improve our children's early years experience and equip them for a lifelong learning journey. By fully funding this commitment, we'll ensure that all children receive high quality early learning and childcare in the public, private and third sectors. I commend this landmark funding agreement to the Parliament. Thank you. The Minister will now take questions. I'm conscious that the topical questions overran, so uh, unless the questions and answers are suitably succinct, the last couple of questioners may not get in. Just early warning. Uh, Michelle Ballantyne to be followed by Ian Gray. 
<clears throat> thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I first thank the Minister for advanced sight of her statement um, and welcome the fact that you've worked in partnership with COSLA to achieve this funding agreement. I just want to ask three questions, three areas that have jumped out at me. First of all, you make reference in the statement to your new funding follows the child model. So can the Minister advise when their child account will be implemented? Secondly, I note that you also refer twice, in fact, to a sustainable hourly rate which will be paid to funders, delivering the funded entitlement. I'd like clarification as to whether this will enable all the ELC staff to be paid the living wage so that we don't end up with inequality across the profession. And thirdly, can you just tell me what controls, if any, will the government put in place to ensure that the capital allocation benefits the nursery provision across the sector and we don't just see local authority expanding their provision. Thank you, Michelle Ballantyne, for those questions. Um, on the first point that you raised, the funding follows the child, we've given a commitment to exploring um, a, a way of delivering that. We are absolutely determined that flexibility will be a cornerstone of this policy and that it must work for families if we're to achieve the goals. Um, so we are exploring that at the moment and by 2020 we will have a funding follows the child model. In terms of the agreement with local authorities um, on uh, funding for living wage entitlement, um, we have absolutely underpinned all of that with a, a national, with a quality standard. For funded entitlement, to achieve funded entitlement, um, people have to meet certain standards. And one of those standards is that those who are delivering 1140 hours will be paying the living wage. Um, as you know, that's part of our commitment going forward, and that is certainly part of the agreement that we have struck with COSLA. In terms of the agreement in capital expenditure, um, this is our agreement with um, COSLA, and, on, um, and we've, they have looked very closely at their local uh, requirements and what is required to be spent on capital expenditure, and the, we have agreed to fully fund it. It's a day for celebration. Ian Gray to be followed by Rona Mackay. Thank you, and uh, my thanks to the Minister for early sight of her statement. When the Auditor-General recently uh, reported on the expansion of early years and childcare, um, she uh, sounded a note of concern over the gap between local authorities' identified funding needs and what the government uh, was then making available. So uh, we welcome the fact that the government have accepted that that initial proposal fell short and have moved very significantly towards the Council's identified uh, revenue funding needs. However, the Auditor-General was also clear that the funding will not deliver the policy uh, unless we can find, recruit and train the required staffing numbers. So, given these funding announcements, can the Minister now tell us how many early years workers currently work in the sector and what she expects that number to be by 2021 and how that increase will be achieved through this funding? Minister. Yes, I can. I can tell you that there are, in December 2016, there were 33,430 people working in Scotland's daycare um, sector. There's another approximately 6,000 people working as childminders. Um, we have in place, as you know, a very robust recruitment programme. We've provided extra places at college. We've provided extra apprenticeship places. We've provided extra university places. And we are absolutely, absolutely confident that we will deliver the extra workforce required. As you know, as you know, we have already um, had a recruitment drive aiming to recruit school leavers. Um, and we are about to go into a phase of a recruitment drive aiming to attract career changers and parents returning to work. We fully expect to deliver the workforce required for this expansion. Rona Mackay is to be followed by Liz Smith. Rona Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can the Minister outline how the Government intends to improve retention rates in the early learning and child care sector, which would allow for consistent contact time between children and practitioners? Minister. 
We recognise the importance of consistent relationships um, in early years. And one of the things, there are a number of ways that we're um, intending to improve recruitment and retention. One of them is, of course, delivering the living wage. Um, another one is the Quality Action Plan, which outlines investment in ongoing training. Um, we are determined that this will be a, an attractive career. It's a real opportunity for people to do work every day that makes a difference in an environment with passionate, knowledgeable people who are excited about the future. It's a real opportunity um, for people to um, consider a change in direction for their careers or to consider a career in early learning and childcare that they might not have considered before. Liz Smith to be followed by Mary Fee. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. The Audit Scotland report was very critical of the Scottish Government uh, for the lack of baseline data that was available to measure the comparative outcomes of targeting different priorities within childcare spending. So besides the very helpful costings being made available today, what evidence has the Scottish Government identified to address these concerns and ensure that Parliament is able to see which areas of spending are delivering the best results? Yes, sir. It's widely acknowledged around the world, including by the OECD, that provision of universally accessible and high quality early learning and childcare helps to provide children with the skills and the confidence that they need in education. And some studies have shown um, it's a cornerstone for closing the poverty related attainment gap. Some of the studies have shown that the benefits are even greater for people in disadvantaged backgrounds. And that's why we're investing more money to almost double the eligible two year olds. And we've also asked local authorities to phase in in the areas that need it most first. Um, undoubtedly, um, you'll have heard in my statement that we're building in um, regular um, checks of how money is being spent, regular checks that the money is being spent in order to deliver what we have asked them to deliver. Um, we are confident that this system will be robust going forward. Mary Feed to be followed by James Dornan. Can I thank the Minister for advance sight of her statement? There is a £214 million difference between what the Scottish Government has committed in capital funding and the £690 million that Council said they need. Can the Minister confirm how this disparity will be met? And can she assure, assure the Chamber that local authorities will not have to find money from core budgets to provide the infrastructure needed? Minister. <laughs> we have an agreed funding package here today. This is precisely um, what local authorities have come to a shared agreement with the government. We are not imposing this. We are not imposing this financial settlement on our local authority partners. These are figures that we have come to a shared agreement about. We have a shared vision for early years in childcare, and we are working hard to deliver that together. Can I suggest the Cabinet Secretary does not answer questions unless he's given a statement. I call on James Dornan to be followed by Alison Johnson. Thank you, President Officer. I'm delighted with the Minister's statement. Look forward to seeing the expansion of early learning and childcare entitlement that comes into being. The Minister will be aware that the Education and Skills Committee has been taking evidence in the impact of poverty on attainment. Just this morning, we saw some of the innovative and encouraging work being done in five schools. Yet, of course, there's still a great deal to do, hence the expansion. Can the Minister outline what impact she expects the expansion of early learning and childcare to have in terms of closing that? stubborn attainment gap we all want to close. Yes, sir. Mr Dornan gets right to the nub of this issue. This is, this is absolutely at the heart of this expansion is delivering quality early years childcare, which will transform the lives of the children of Scotland. We want Scotland to be the best place in the world to grow up. We want every child to flourish and fulfill their potential. I mentioned before the OEC study, OECD studies worldwide, which show how this offering can tackle the 
attainment gap before it even occurs. You'll have heard me mention that we're aiming um, to increase the uptake in eligible two-year-olds, and that's a vital part of how we aim to um, close the attainment gap. And you'll also be interested to hear that the, this morning, just this morning, when I went to visit Cameron House Nursery, I met a really knowledgeable and passionate um, head teacher, Chris McCormick, with years of experience in early years, who said very loudly and clearly the difference that she could see. They're already delivering 1140 hours. They have been for a number of years. She can see, and she and her staff were absolutely astonished to see already the difference it's making to the children coming through their nursery. Alison Johnson to be followed by Tavish Scott. Um, thank you. The Minister referred to the effort she's making to almost double the uptake of the eligible two-year-old offer. This is welcome, but can I ask the Minister what has been done to identify why take-up has been so low and to tell Parliament how she envisages raising awareness of the offer? And will, will that raising awareness, for example, uh, be made part of the Family Financial Health Check um, and the Scottish Government's income maximisation strategy? Thank you. Minister. Um, certainly, we are looking at all options to raise awareness. You'll be um, well aware that we wrote, I wrote to the UK government uh, some time ago um, to ask whether they were going to alter the regulation in Parliament, which would enable us to share data with um, local authorities, between the DWP and local authorities, as they do in England and Wales. I haven't uh, yet had a commitment on a timescale on that. Um, that would make a big difference. But meantime, we recognise that word of mouth is one of the strongest ways to um, ensure that everyone who needs this support is aware of this support. Many of the nurseries that I visit, word of mouth is the main way that people found out, find out about it. We're also going to increase um, awareness in job centres. We're going to increase awareness amongst health visiting staff. And the local authorities Authorities will be um, working very hard in their local communities to establish what the best means of community communication are um, in their areas. But this is something that we are absolutely determined to improve. Tavish Scott to be followed by Claire Hockey. Thank you, Presiding Officer. If the government now know how many staff working across Scotland uh, are working in childcare, how many extra staff will be needed from today, 1st of May 2018, to deliver this childcare expansion? Minister. We now estimate that up to 11,000 additional early learning and childcare workers will be required by 2020 in order to deliver the expansion. We've already, as I said, increased capacity courses in colleges and universities, 650 additional HNCs, 350 additional graduate places, and as well as providing local authorities with an additional £21 million for expanding and training their workforce. We're working with the Scottish Funding Council to offer 1,700 additional places on a one-year HNC course in 2018-19 and over 400 additional graduate places. Thank you. Clear Hockey to be followed by Oliver Mundell. Firm that local authorities facing an increased entitlement will prioritise the children and families who would benefit most from the expansion. Yes, sir. Absolutely. I've said already that at the core of this policy, at the core of this expansion, is our aim to close the attainment gap. Studies around the world have shown us that this increase in childcare in early years will help us to do that. And the stu those studies have also shown us that the biggest difference could be made to the people from the most disadvantaged backgrounds. That's why we are so keen to improve the uptake amongst eligible two years old. And that's why in the phasing of this policy, we have already asked the committed to plans in, in, to put plans in place um, by local authorities to uh, use a reference to the Scottish Index of Multiple Deprivation or an equivalent measure to ensure that the children who need this the most will benefit from it first. Oliver Mundell to be followed by Stuart McMillan. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I ask the Minister um, what practical impact this agreement will have on the PVI sector, particularly when it comes to the allocation of capital funding 
Uh, I want to know how that will help them to expand provision and increase flexibility, particularly in rural areas like my own. Minister. Thank you for the question. I look forward to meeting with you and your constituents just um, immediately after this um, statement in order to discuss that particular issue. The capital um, spending which has been agreed has been agreed with local authorities. Local authorities are best placed to understand the needs in their local community and what's required to deliver this policy. I'm absolutely sure that they share the vision that we do in terms of making a difference to these children. They share the vision that we do in terms of a flexible provision and they have absolutely accounted for um, what needs to go to, to uh, local nurseries to do that. Stuart McMillan to be followed by Joanne Lamond. Thank you, presiding officer. I can ask the minister what actions are available to the Scottish government uh, if local authorities don't fulfil their commitments to deliver the infrastructure and staff required, in addition to utilising local childminders. Minister, um, we have um, this funding is going to be allocated to local authorities as a specific grant um, in order to ensure that it's protected for investment in early learning and childcare. The authorities will be required to report to the Scottish Government on how this funding has been applied. There is absolutely a clear, I can't emphasise this enough in, the, in this chamber, there is a clear commitment from our colleagues in local government as to the aims and the delivery of this policy. We have a shared vision and a shared agreement and we're keen to move forward today. Joanne Lamont to be followed by Fulton McGregor. Thank you very much. Um, in relation to this question of shared visions, the Minister will be aware that parents in Glasgow are facing a doubling of their childcare charges and families right now are making decisions to cut the number of hours their children are accessing, not expanding them. Is it the case, could it be the case, that the cost to families are being increased so massively to cover the gap in funding from the Scottish Government? Or, if not that, how does the Minister explain Glasgow's decision and how does that decision to uh, um, hurt families right now work in with her and our shared commitment to expanding childcare? Minister. We have just reached agreement today um, to fully fund an incredible expansion in early years in childcare, which will transform early years for our children and for our families and make an incredible difference to every family in the land, a saving of approximately 4,500 per child for each family in the land, as well as providing living wage jobs up and down the country. We are also providing um, incredible quality offering in terms of early education, which will transform the, uh, the outcomes for those children from the poorest backgrounds. It is absolutely for local authorities to make decisions on how much they charge for their wraparound care. It is not for me in central government to overrule or impose my view on local authorities. Local authorities know absolutely best what their local needs are and are accountable to their local communities. I am quite sure they are best placed to make those decisions. And very briefly, Fulton McGregor. Thank you, President Officer. Can the Minister outline what role she expects play and outdoor learning to have when delivering the expansion to 1140 hours? Minister. Mr McGregor will be aware that a couple of months ago I visited a forest kindergarten here in Edinburgh to make an announcement of a spending of over £800,000 to Inspiring Con Scotland to work with eight local authorities developing a how-to guide for play and outdoor um, delivery of education as well as supporting social enterprises. You'll also be pleased to learn that about 20% of the additional capacity um, is going to be outdoor provision. I am 
this is a real opportunity to transfer, transform the quality of education in Scotland. We have the most incredible asset in our outdoor environment. Just this morning I spent time at a nursery in Edinburgh. Children outside in the sunshine playing, learning balance, learning communication, a natural appreciation of the natural world as we guddled around digging worms. It is absolutely going to be a key part of our offering going forward. Thank you very much. And that concludes our statement. We'll move on to our next item of business in the Commonwealth Games. Just take a few moments for the ministers and members to change.